a lot of Arizonans still are very, you know, bitter about, you know, this section of the party that's, you know, more of a moderate wing mm -hmm. that they have not been included. Um, and it is just full MAGA, you know, in the state of Arizona. So there's a couple of Republicans who are standing up who are saying, I'm voting for Kamala Harris. Sure. Um, is that everybody? Absolutely not. But I think there is. Welcome to Reporter's Notebook, where we talk to the Washington Examiner's top journalists about the stories breaking on their beats. I'm Jim Antle. I'm joined by congressional reporter Samantha Jo Roth, SJ. We've had a big shakeup in the race, and we're starting to see how that shakeup has played out on the electoral map. What's changed? Yeah, so I think you're seeing a lot of these election handicappers. They're looking at states that were, you know, previously in the leans Republican column, and they're moving them over to toss up. Uh, we're talking about states like Georgia, Arizona, and what is the third one? I can't remember right now. What is it? Nevada. Yes, Nevada. Yes. That's it. That's it. There are three. Um, so those are states that obviously Biden won, um, but he was appearing to be losing or at the time when he was running. And so now that Harris and is- In some cases by pretty healthy margins for yes. you know, battleground state. Purposes. Exactly, but you know, still losing. And mm -hmm. so now I think uh, that Harris is in the race. They've kind of adjusted some of those margins, looking at battleground state polling. Uh, there was also in Minnesota, I think it was leans Democratic and they made it like likely Democratic. Uh, obviously, that's where uh, the, you know, the vice presidential presumptive Democratic nominee is from. Sure. Um, and they also moved likely Democratic to more Democratic in New Hampshire. Right. So that was interesting, too. So I think that, you know, that we're seeing the map change, but I think a lot of people are also recognizing that this is gonna be an extremely close race. Mm -hmm. um, states that, I mean, I think we're talking about like a state in, in Arizona, for example, 11,000 votes is how much Biden won by. So mm -hmm. it's gonna be close. Sure. And so, you know, before Biden dropped out, some of the map talk was getting kind of crazy because they were not only talking about, you know, the six or seven usual battleground states, but they were talking about New Hampshire, as you mentioned. They were talking about Minnesota. Virginia. Virginia. <laughs> Colorado in some Democratic internals was starting to be a little bit in play. Uh, this does seem like it's shrunk the map of really contested states, this shakeup, right? I think so, but I also think there are still so many. You have the blue wall that Biden was able to keep that is right. highly in contention. We're talking about, you know, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania. These are really, really key important states. There's other states like North Carolina, you know, like there's other ones that, you know, everyone really needs to be watching closely is Arizona as well. So I think the map is looking a little better for Democrats, but as you've seen Kamala Harris even say, they know that they are the underdogs. And I think it's pretty obvious. And so there's obviously, as a result of that, some pursuit of crossover voters. And there is a, a, a group of anti-Trump Republicans in the state of Arizona mm -hmm. who are invoking a previous Republican presidential nominee as a reason to maybe vote for Harris. Yeah, so there's a big group of Republicans. I would say, I mean, it's been a sizable group for, for a long time, ever since uh, 2020, where they, you know, really detest the way that former President Tr Trump treated uh, the late Senator John McCain, as you can probably remember. Mm -hmm. He made comments that saying he wasn't a war hero when right. he was campaigning in 2016. He, you know, even after his death, had, you know, said a couple of disparaging remarks. He wasn't at his funeral. The funeral, the McCain funeral, had a little bit of an anti Trump rally feel to it. And it some did. of the speakers. Yes, and he was not invited there. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of Arizonans still are very, you know, bitter about, you know, this section of the party that's, you know, more of a moderate wing mm -hmm. that they have not been included. Um, and it is just full MAGA, you know, in the state of Arizona. So there's a couple of Republicans who are standing up who are saying, I'm voting for Kamala Harris. Sure. Um, is that everybody? Absolutely not. But I think there is, we've seen evidence time and time again, even in 20, you know, 22, uh, you know, former President Trump and the candidates that he continues to endorse, uh, specifically the election denying candidates, have lost over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a growing frustration within, you know, 
the Arizona GOP, uh, it's a faction, it's not all of them, but mm -hmm. that they feel like the party is not inclusive of all the ideas. So they are, you know, leading the charge. One of them, uh, the mayor of Mesa, who I was actually able to speak with, he's actually going to the DNC and he is going to, you know, Harris's rally on Friday. Mm -hmm. So this is a pretty interesting, I mean, this is the third biggest city in the state of Arizona, so it's huge. Has Cindy McCain weighed in on this election yet? No, she hasn't, mm -hmm. but she she did make a big splash when she weighed in for President Biden in 2020, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of Republicans saw her go with him and kind of took her cues. So she still is a big figure, you know, in the state of Arizona, so I think a lot of people are watching really closely. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. You can read Samantha Joe and the rest of our political team's coverage at WashingtonExaminer.com.